In this video, what I'm going to talk about <clears throat> is taking your iPad and connecting it to the calendar and the contacts piece. I, I've got uh, my email kicked up here, and just to recap what we've done, we've got our email structured, ready to go on the student one email account, so that looks good. Um, but there's also a con contacts and a calendar piece. Let me hit the calendar here real quick and you'll notice the calendar has no events in it whatsoever and this is the iPad specific calendar on here. Um, basically what we're going to do is we're going to sync this iPad with the calendar and the contacts piece from the Google piece that we had set up. Email's all good to go. Here's contacts right here. You see that there are no contacts in this book whatsoever. So we actually have to go to a website through the iPad and before I do that what I'm going to do is let me just arrange this what I'm gonna do is log into the email uh, through the Gmail function and I just kinda wanna show you the calendars and the contacts from that particular piece so let me go ahead and log in here Gmail get to the Gmail account and then I'm gonna log in as that student one account that I've been using right along And I'm going to sign into this account. You'll see the same emails that are here that I, I just pulled up in my iPad as well. So I'm going to hit calendars. And you'll notice there's my shared uh, class calendar from the multimedia shared calendar. And again, I'm, I'm looking at this from a student perspective. So all I have is that shared, shared class time from the multimedia calendar. I'm going to go ahead and um, <clears throat> as well, I'm going to add a new event. But I'm going to add a new event in my own student one calendar. So let's go ahead. We're going to add, uh, let's add study hall in. So I type that in and notice I've got no other calendars picked from. So it automatically goes to my student one calendar, which is in blue now. We all know that's the wrong time for study hall. We've got to move it up to 730. So I'm showing you right now basically how to change an event uh, time just by dragging it. And we also know it's not an hour long. It's two hours long. So I grab on the double handle drag that down over two hours. So great, I got my study hall in there, my study hall event on Thursday night. I've got my shared multimedia calendar on Wednesday, which I have no control over the events on that one. I can just see kind of what's going on there. And uh, we're gonna uh, kick out of this real quick. And I'm gonna take it, take it back to my iPad. Whoa. Get back into my iPad. Now what I'm going to do is go into the calendar on my iPad. Give it a quick second. It's going to sync up. But you'll notice the study hall that I just put in is now in my iPad calendar. But if I look back on the Wednesday, my multimedia class is not. So there's something going on here. So any event that I make on my Google side on my own calendar automatically syncs up with my iPad calendar. No problem. There is a way to get all of your calendars synced up at once. So I'm going to go into Safari. And I'm going to go to a website and I'm going to type it in m.google.com. And let me go ahead and type that in. And again, this is on Safari on my iPad. So I'm using my web browser on my iPad. And Google lays out a bunch of tools that are based on mobile, mobile pieces. The one I'm looking for is the sync tool, which is a third row down, third one over. I'm going to go ahead and click on that sync tool. And I come up with this screen. And it gives you some directions if you'd like, but the link I want you to click on is where it says sign in with your Google account. Kind of uh, about a third of the way down the page. Um, this, is, this little application is going to allow you to enter your Google account through your app, your iPad, and decide what calendars you want to sync up. So I've got, unfortunately, I've got to log in again. So I'm going to log in student one. And I'm going to go ahead and click the sign in button. And the minute I do that, it creates an account for my iPad. And you'll see that in the list. Uh, this is a link. So you go ahead and click on the iPad. And here are the choices that you get. You got, you got some mail enables up above. Then you get your own calendar, which is automatically synced. So you don't have to worry about it. But if you look down below under shared calendars, you've got the option to select which shared calendars you want to sync your iPad with. So I'm going to go ahead and click on, notice it says read only next to the multimedia. Again, we talked about this in the Google calendars piece where uh, that multimedia calendar is only read only for you as a student. So I'm going to click that one on. I want to sync that one to my iPad. And then I'm going to go ahead over to the right, bottom right, and click Save. And it says Device Settings Saved Successfully. 
And let me go back into my calendar and give it a quick second again, a little delay, and you'll see it pop up here in a second. And there it is. So it takes a few seconds to sync that calendar, and then once that's done, you've got uh, you've got the event from the shared calendar showing up on your iPad calendar. Very, very, very powerful tool. So perfect. I've got uh, my personal calendar synced as well as my multimedia calendar, and understand that anytime you make an addition to either now, either your personal calendar or let's say that teacher who owns the rights to that multimedia calendar makes that change, they will both go into the iPad. Let's add an event through the iPad calendar right here. So we'll just type in an event. Put in baseball game here. And we'll put in a date. Actually, that looks pretty good. Four to five. You can scroll on these wheels to change the days or the times or AM, PM. Um, you got to want to make sure I'm on the right calendar, right? Student one. You've got the multimedia up there, but again, it doesn't does not allow you to add events to that multimedia calendar. You're a read only anyway. So we're going to keep it on the student one calendar. I'm going to go ahead and click done here to add that event in. And remember, to add an, an event in the calendar, you go to the bottom right corner and, and just click on that plus sign, and that'll allow you to add an event. And I'm going to fire up, go back to my web-based uh, calendar through my uh, email account. And again, a couple of seconds later, you'll notice the baseball game shows up on Friday. So kind of showing you these are just hand-in-hand -hand synced up now, and within a few seconds, you can add events from one place to another, and uh, they will go from one uh, one calendar to the other, whether you're on the iPad or the uh, or the web-based. Let's talk about contacts real quick. Contacts obviously done the same exact way. I have no contacts right now, so I'm going to go ahead on the web-based piece, and I'm going to add a contact in. We'll put in Joe Smith. Everybody knows Joe Smith, right? So I'll just put his name in here, and I'll click Save. So now I have one contact, Joe Smith. And if everything works out well, I'm going to minimize the web-based piece. And now when I go back to my iPad, let's get out of the calendar here. I'll hit the home button. And then I'm going to go into contacts. And you'll notice Joe Smith is automatically there. Didn't take as long as the calendar, so that's pretty interesting. You know, there's, there's barely any delay. Uh, this is a good idea to keep all your contacts in your Gmail because, God forbid, something happens to it. Let's add somebody from the iPad world here. So I'll add Fred Flintstone into my iPad contacts. And I immediately go back to my web. And there's Fred Flintstone on my web-based contacts list. Contacts are important to, to keep note of. I mentioned it earlier. Let's say you step on your iPad or, I don't know, somehow you end up throwing it out the window in frustration. You lose your iPad. If you have contacts that are based on the iPad itself, you've lost all your contacts. If you get used to syncing this thing and this idea of syncing these pieces together, you will always have your contacts ready. If you have an iPhone, which I know most of you do, and you've got contacts on your iPhone, if they're based on Google, you have access to your contacts whether you're on your iPhone, your iPad, or Google. So it's, this is a great system to use. You'll never lose anything.